Huh. Imagine if you had to live in the washing machine. That would be really tough. Just sitting there knowing that at some point someone might have to use that washing machine. What? Okay, so maybe it's not exactly like that, but to be in the intertidal, you gotta be pretty tough. Twice a day, the tides come in and out and inundate this area between the land and the sea. That's right, intertidal organisms face the washing machine effect every day, twice a day for most of their lives. So in this episode, we're going to take a closer look at the intertidal zone. Let's first take a look at how tides form. All right, so here's Earth. When we add the moon, the moon and Earth will exert a gravitational pull on each other. This doesn't mean that Earth will end up looking anything like this, but the pull will have an effect on Earth's oceans. If we were to move the moon, well, then that would also move the gravitational pull, of course. The gravitation of the sun also affects Earth. Twice a month, during full and new moon, the sun, the moon and Earth are lined up and the gravitational pulls are the strongest. This is also when we get the greatest tidal difference, called spring tides. The pull is the weakest when the moon is half, which is when we get the smallest tidal difference. We call these neap tides. The intertidal zone is the area between the high tide mark and the low tide mark. And why is it so tough for organisms to live here? Because they gotta deal with desiccation and they gotta deal with wave action. So while Seuss is down in California looking at intertidal zones, I'm heading to Friday Harbor Marine Research Lab to talk to Dr. Diana Padilla, who's an intertidal zone expert. <laughs> Tell me, where are we standing now? Okay, so we're in the mid-intertidal zone, and what that means, we're in sort of the middle range of the shore between the high tide, where the water completely covers um, the shore, and the low tide, the lowest part of the shore that's only exposed on a few days of the year. I'm Diana Padilla, and I'm a professor of ecology and evolution at the State University of New York in Stony Brook. And I do my summer research every year here at Friday Harbor Laboratories, and I've been coming here since I was an undergraduate. So the organisms that live here have to, every single day, be able to deal with both being covered by water is all also um, being exposed to the air. Mm. So they've got to sort of be able to do the two things well, the things that a normal marine organism has to do, but also all those kinds of things that a terrestrial organism has to do. When you look at this wall, you can see that there's different bands of organisms. We break this up into zones and it's referred to as zonation. So here we have the low tide zone. This area is almost perpetually wet. The lowest mark of the low tide zone is as far down as the tide will ever get. Below this point is called the subtidal zone. So here we have the middle tide zone and organisms that are found here have to cope with being submerged half the day and being exposed to air half the day. To me, these algae that live in this part of the shore are truly, truly amazing. The fucus has slime on it, which actually helps it trap water. Okay. So it holds water onto it and makes it stay moist for longer periods of time. But what's really astounding is that this alga can completely dry out. It can lose more than 90% of its water and still be alive. Really? And then you just add water and suddenly it's back photosynthesizing, doing all those things that a happy plant would do. Incredible. It's really amazing. And as we move up, we have the higher tide zone. Now these organisms are dealing with more extreme desiccation. They're exposed for a majority of the day. The intertidal is a particularly special place because the organisms that live here have to be really tough. They have to be able to deal with freshwater rain, freezing winters, hot baking summers. They have to deal with rocks tumbling on them when the water washes in and out with waves. So the intertidal is a, it's a, it's a tough place. So you see tough organisms here. Hmm. 
Let's see what Sue's found. See, these guys move super fast because when the waves come in, they go and they find a little pocket where they can hide to protect themselves. And the same thing goes for these gastropods. Look, they're all tucked away in these little pockets in the rock. And if I run my hand over, just like what would happen if the waves were crashing over this area of high tide, I don't touch any of them because they're all submerged and protected in the crevices in the rock. So here's a quick recap. The intertidal zone is the area between the high tide mark and the low tide mark. In the intertidal zone, we have what's called zonation. And why is it so tough for organisms to live here? Because they gotta deal with desiccation and they gotta deal with wave action. So the high tide's coming in, but until next time, never stop exploring your world. Besides that, it's just it's just the coolest place in the world. <laughs> yeah. It is.